Red Army, welcome to this chat that I'm going to be doing. This is the first one in the, uh, hopefully, a series, if I can get um, more ex-players or current players, if they're willing to come on. And um, our first guest is, well, when you talk about Hull Kingston Rovers in the recent past, the first person you think of is Mr. Ben Kane. Hello, sir. How are you, mate? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? I'm all right. I'm very good, thank you. I'm I'm doing really well. Apart keeping from, yourself busy during lockdown. Keep keeping busy and keeping away from the hairdressers, mate. As you can see. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So this is um, first in a series. I'm hoping. So yeah, you're my first victim, if you like. And um, yeah, we're just gonna go through your career, basically. And um, catch up with you because it's been a while. You've um, you left us in 2018, was it? Went to York. I did, mate. Yeah, that's that's when I that, well, I left at the end of 2017 and went over to York for 18 and 19, and then and then retired last year. So um, so yeah, but I've been I've been back I've been back at the club since uh, probably around about this time last year actually. Uh, with the uh, with well, I say I came back and then. Uh, at the end of March, got put on furlough, and I've been been on furlough ever since. So that's uh, that's where yeah, I'm yeah. at the moment. Yeah. Um, sorry to hear that, but hopefully things will pick up in the new year. Hopefully. Um, yeah. So we'll start off. Um, how did you, or what was the first team you played for? And we'll start from there. Well, back in my amateur days, the only club I played for were Normanton Knights. That were the um, that was the only club I played for from being probably around about seven, eight years old. Started out there and uh, played um, played there right up until uh, I left for the army when I was about 17 and a half. So I played at Normanton until then. Uh, and then when I'd used to come home on leave, I'd come home and I'd still play um, uh, play on a weekend when I, when I could come home on leave and stuff like that. So I played... Uh, and then I got posted to Germany. So right up until probably our twenty year old, I played at Normanton. And then when I came back from uh, when I came back from Germany, from the army, I uh, I carried on where I left off. So I would have been about twenty uh, twenty one, twenty one thereabouts. Yeah, twenty one. I had like I had I had I had about a year at Normanton before I um, before I ended up at, at Doncaster, which I, I had a stop off at Wakefield Trinity. Under twenty threes as well, which didn't that didn't last too long. I think I played about eight games, and and their coach said that I, uh, Shane McNally was well, at the time. He just said he didn't see me um, doing anything in the game, so I left. Uh, went back to Normanton, and but yeah, Normanton's where it all started for me, Alex. And I I did hear that you wasn't always a fullback. Where no, I was actually I, I, I was actually I always um, played scrum half or standoff in the amateur days. Oh, right, okay. Um, and then um, as I went, when I went to Doncaster, when I got a, a crack at Doncaster, it was funny how my career panned out, really. And some people will know this, some people won't. But when I, um, when I went to Doncaster, I went like as a trialist. Uh, and I used to travel with a guy called Andy Hay. You might remember him. He played at Castleford and Leeds Rhinos as a second rower. And he, um, he was at Doncaster 2005, the year I signed there. So I used to travel with him. Um, and... Um, he uh, he really took me under his wing a little bit, really. In fact, at the time, at the time, I was banned from driving for drink driving. <laughs> so, yeah. so uh, you know, one, one of my uh, one of my fine uh, mistakes that I made throughout my life. But um, he he took me under his wing, and I was there as a trialist. And uh, I only got a crack at Doncaster as a fullback because we, we used the Northern Rail Cup or a Reva Cup, whatever it was called at that time. We used that as a um, like warm up games for Doncaster that year. I remember coach saying we're just going to use this as as warm up games, and whatever happens with it happens with it. So I got a crack to play uh, halfback. Uh, in I think I played about three games, and um, I scored. I scored probably half a dozen tries in those three games. Played played pretty well. The halfbacks for Doncaster at the time that year. Doncaster spent a fair bit of money. Graham Holroyd, who was an ex Leeds Rhinos standoff, and there was a guy called Latham. I don't, I don't know how you pronounce his surname, but it was spelled T A W H A I, Thai Fire or Tawai, or however you want to pronounce that. So, them two were really senior players in the team, and I were never going to get a halfback spot because 
they were probably the main in, the main earners at the club. Um, when it came round to, uh, I don't know if it was the first game of the season or it might have been a couple of games in, the fullback just quit. It was a kid called Craig Horn, and I believe we were from Oldham that way. Uh, and he just he just decided that he was going to quit. So, uh, Sinjin Ellis, the coach at the time, he, he just said to me, look, we've got a situation as, uh, as fullbacks quit. Um, have you ever played there or would you be willing to give it a crack? And I said, well, I'll give it a crack, but I've never played there. So, um, so that, that was the beginning of my journey playing in the outside backs as a, as a fullback. And I, uh, I think I played 20, I think I played about 22 games for Doncaster that year. And I played a couple of times, obviously, against OKR and, and had two decent games. Um, and I just had a decent year, really. Like, I was in a good team with some good players, uh, a guy called Marty Moana. I don't know how old you are, Alex, but Marty Moana, he was a, a decent player back in the day. Uh, Lee Harland, an ex Castleford second rower, Andy Hay, Graham Allroyd, uh, Marvin Golden. So there were some decent names in that Doncaster team. And I think that obviously helped me uh, as, a, as a young amateur trialist uh, develop a little bit. And then I got a, a, I got a phone call from... Before I, before I signed for Hull KR at the end of 2005 for the 2006 season, Batley had made me an offer, uh, Doncaster had made me an offer, and Hull KR came in. Um, and the story, the, I'll talk to you about some numbers on that, uh, which is quite interesting. So Batley, uh, Batley offered me part-time, Batley offered me six grand plus uh, some uh, appearance money or winning and lo losing money. Doncaster... I think they matched that and offered me some winning and losing money. And Hull KR offered me eight grand to be full time. And I was like 21 going on 22 at the time. And it weren't really about the money for me. It was just about the opportunity. That was, that was a big thing for me. Um, so, so I turned down, I turned, turned down two part-time roles at six grand a year where I could have, you know, made that money and, and been working with my dad and, you know, making okay money to, to take up a, eight grand full-time contract with OKR. There were some bonuses included in that uh, for, for winning and whatnot. Um, but it was just a, a great opportunity for me to to get a crack at being in a full-time environment, which I always wanted to do as a kid. But I was just never quite, um, if I'm being totally honest, mate, I was probably never quite disciplined or, or good enough as a kid. Um, I always got my attention diverted by... Um, chasing girls around a park or getting pissed up on a weekend or whatever it might have been. So just doing things that young lads with no direction would do and that was pretty much me, really. Yeah. Um, you, you say that you were impressed against Hulkingston Rovers, which is why they went for you. Um, you also had a really good first season with Hulkingston Rovers, didn't you? Yeah, that was a good year for us. Again, I was fortunate in, in terms of the players that I was surrounded by. Um, some of the quality in that team, it would be unfair to name just one or two, but um, the quality in that team we had in 2006 and combine that with the coaching ability of Justin Morgan, it was just a, it was just a fantastic year for us. And I think the great thing about that year was obviously the promotion, which was, a, which was a big deal. But I think if you look at the, I think there were a fair few young Hull boys that came through that year as well. Um, I know Chris Wellham were a big one that, that ended up coming through and we know what Chris is, he's just finished playing Super League this last year so he's had a good solid Super League career as Chris uh, in particular that's one that comes off the top of my head but then um, there were people like James Garmston who people might not remember a uh, young, young forward who I don't know if he's still playing amateur rugby league and then you know move forward a few more years you've got people like um uh, James Green, Jordan Cox, uh, all these guys coming through, Matty Marsh, and um, so so yeah, so so it was great. That first year, that first year was fantastic, mate. Like I said, I was fortunate enough to be in a team that had um, some um, some real quality players, and obviously, when you're playing in a team full of quality, it just makes everybody. Um, I suppose it makes everybody play that little bit better. Yeah, um, when. When you was playing for Rover, well, all all the time you've been playing for Rovers, it's quite clear that you um, that you've got a lot of passion. When you is that is that passion just for Rovers, or do you always play like that? I, I think that's probably been. yeah. I think that's probably built into my character naturally, anyway, Alex. But the the thing that 
the thing with OKR was just that it was a club, which I'll always be grateful for. It was a club that gave me the 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 re- Doncaster obviously gave me a chance, but OKR were where 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 I got my real breakthrough, if you like, um, yeah. to do to do what I always wanted to do, which was to play in the top level in the UK. So um, that when you c- combine that with the the bond that I kind of created with the fans over the years as well. Um, it just made it, it just made it special. And like, I'm, I'm probably, I'm, I'm probably a whole lad now. I live out in Sunk Island, which is obviously a bit out the way of a bit further out, outside the hole, but uh, I've settled over here. It's become my, um, it's become my home. So um, if it weren't for, if it weren't for the club and if it weren't for the people in and around the club, the people who are involved directly in the club and the, the supporters and so on, then that would have probably never, never happened, mate. So, um, so yeah, the, the, the passionate, set, I'm, I'm kind of an all or nothing guy anyway, with whatever I do, whether it's business stuff or whether it's um, sporting stuff, I'll always throw myself into it, whatever I do and wherever I'm at. But yeah. the connection, the connection that were developed with whole KR were just, um, were just one that will be with me for life. So, um, so yeah, mate, that's that's the answer to that question. Yeah, I think as fans as well, that's all we really want to see. You know, just passion and pride for pulling on that shirt. You may have bad games or whatever, but if you put in hundred percent in, we can't moan as fans. You know. I you, think that's what I think. That, like sorry, Alex. sorry. Yeah, I was just saying you played like a local lad. You know, that was playing for his um, the club he's always supported. Yeah, and I, and I, like I said, I think that's what because I'm I'm always the first to admit and and uh, fully acknowledge that I was never the, the never the best player, never the most skillful or anything like that. But I think, like you touched on there, what the majority of fans all all the majority of fans want is to see players doing the best. Um, yeah. And sometimes, sometimes it's just not good enough. You know what I mean? So, uh, and there'll be many performances where I'd put in what were just weren't good enough. But uh, nobody could ever. Nobody could ever um, say that I never tried my best, and I think that's why that's why that connection with the with the Hulk AR people um, were always a strong one. Because you know, regardless if I were if I were a, a good player, an average player, a shit player, or a great player, the the majority of people that are really immersed in the club, they'll they will always probably appreciate the effort yeah. over the over the ability. I suppose would be a fair a, a fair assessment. I think. Absolutely. Um, so you had a, a few years with us, and then in 2011, um, you went to Featherston um, after a bit of controversy, if you like. Um, how did it feel to leave Rovers? I you- was gutted, mate. Yeah, I was, to- I was totally gutted, like, because, like I said, I, I, I'd, I'd created that... Um, I'd created that strong bond and whatnot over the five or six years that I were there. Um, so, but it were it were all my own fault. You know what I mean? There were no, really nobody else to blame apart from myself for for, for that happening. Um, but in a way, and I say this all the time now, I've never been I've never been one for um, believing in fate and everything happens for. I've never really been one for that, but. Realistically, if that didn't happen to me at my time in my career, my life wouldn't be what it is today. So, yes, rugby league's been a great part of my life, and okay, I has, but my life in terms of my, you know, wife and my family and my kids and stuff like that. Now, if I didn't go through that shit that I went through um, and caused myself the issues that I caused myself, I probably wouldn't be like where I am right now in terms of life. So forget rugby and forget all that stuff, but life in general, I probably wouldn't be it if I didn't go through that process. So although at the time it was stupid and it would, you know, I, I absolutely made a, made a stinker, um, I, sometimes, I sometimes think now that maybe it was meant to happen for, for me to be where I am in life now. I think a little bit more like that these days. So... Um, but yeah, I went off to I went off to Featherstone and I played there. I think I played about uh, might have played nine or twelve games or something like that at Featherstone. Uh, got another grand final win with Fev, and then obviously went on to um, to Wakefield in uh, uh, two thousand and twelve. 
yeah. which um, which were which were pretty good. Probably my best two years of my career, <laughs> to be totally honest, um, at Wakefield. Yeah, that was cut short as well, though, wasn't it? Because of was it financial problems at Wakefield, so they had to sell. Is that right? Yeah. So yeah. So Wakefield were in. Um, I mean, I, I don't think they had to sell me. I don't think they had to do that. Uh, I think they could have probably kept on me because I, w- I weren't on mega money or anything like that. Uh, but uh, me and Neil, re- me and Neil Udgell remained friends right the way through um, through all the shit I'd put him through. <laughs> I, mu- I must be accountable for a lot of his grey hairs and his balding head. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but no, me and Neil always, I, I think, like when we talk, because Neil is a big, you've got to remember Neil is a big Hulk AR fan, first and yeah. foremost. And then, and then obviously... He's looked after the club like he has done for the last you know, 10, 15 years, whatever it's been. Um, so, so me and even though that decision was made for me to move on, me and Neil always remained in touch. Um, and funnily enough, I, were, I came over to Hull at some point. Um, it would have probably been during 2000 and, 2013 or 14, maybe, to do some business stuff. And I said to Neil, Lord, I'm coming over. And he said, oh, well, why don't you come round and get, get a bit to eat? So I went round to see him and had a bit to eat, went to see Neil and his family. And um, it must have been 2014 because he said to me, what are you doing next year? And I said, oh, I've just signed a new contract. And he went, all right, no worries. And that was that. That was the end of the conversation. Um, and then come to the end of 2014, Wakefield, there, were, there were a bit of talk of them, you know, potentially going into administration or whatever and, and so on. And then um, Hulk I came back and... You know, spoke to Wakefield and made an offer for me to to come back. But there were a big exodus at Wakefield that year. Tim Smith got sold off to Salford. I think they made a, a packet from selling uh, Tim to Salford. Paul Ayton, uh, Paul Ayton got sold off to um, Leeds. Uh, I think I don't, can't remember if Kyle Amor got sold to St Helens or his contract was just up. But there were Wakefield did what they had to do uh, in terms of to bring money in. But for me, then. It was a great opportunity for me to come back to Hull KR, and when it got when it got brought up to me that that could potentially happen, I, I just got really excited. And um, even though I absolutely loved my time at Wakefield and I played my best stuff at Wakefield, I think mo- most people would agree with that. I'll follow my career that at Wakefield I had my best two years of my career, and and if I didn't, then Hull KR wouldn't have wanted to pay for me to come back anyway. Yeah, that's so, true. So, so we were doing something right and like I said I'd always stayed in touch with Neil as friends and he saw that I'd changed uh, what I was doing away from the field I found business away from sport I found a focus stuff to do away from rugby to keep me uh, to keep me to keep me busy and keep me focused and uh, it would it was a turning point in my life 2011 was a big turning point in my life and even though like I said at the time it was, it was shit and um, you know making stupid mistakes Things turned out for the better uh, as to where we are today, mate. So it were, it's uh, it's all good. Yeah, it's all about learning from your mistakes, isn't it? Which you evidently did. So yeah, that was good on you. Um, so coming back to Hull Kingston Rovers, um, you you <laughs> you had some highlights and lowlights. Let's be honest, as a team, not you personally. So we'll yeah. start off with the. With the cup run, so um, yeah. at any point in the cup run, did you think you'd get to the final, or how early in the cup run did you think you'd get uh, to the final? Do you know what, mate? I, like I were, I were in and out of the team that year, and um, it, it, it will. There were no, there were no. I don't remember there being any major hype about it, and people getting overly excited about it until the semi final. Yeah, and then the, the the belief really started to. Um, you could feel the belief in in the team, and I think most of the players uh, who played against Warrington at Headingley, you could f- you could just you, when you pl- when you play sport. I don't know if you play sport at any level, but sometimes you just get the feeling that you're going to win. Mm. You just get that feel. You, you just get that feeling, and there's that feeling amongst your group, that confidence, and and there was certainly a lot of that flying about uh, in the semi final against Warrington. So. Um, it were um, it were it were awesome, mate. I mean, the downside for me that I didn't get I didn't get picked <laughs> I didn't get picked to play final, but um, I think the 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 journey for the club that year was just fantastic to to get to the yeah. final. Um, 
and obviously a 50 nil loss. What was the feeling like after that? Because I remember going to town centre to welcome you all back and um, you could just see Kieran Dixon was absolutely devastated. Um, his head was constantly down and, you know, I felt real sorry for the guy. But, um, yeah, what was everybody feeling like that? Or was it just yeah, a case yeah. of... No, 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 no. I think, I think, I think everybody will go to it because when, when you're playing... When you when you've got yourself to a semi final and beat a team like Warrington going into a final, you conf- there's still the confidence there. Yeah. Um, uh, and and Dicko is one of the most confident guys um, I've ever come across, and is a is a is a great player. And I think just there were obviously a couple of things in that game that didn't go too well for him. So he's naturally going to feel. And bear it in mind, at that time five years ago, he would have probably only been twenty. I'm not sure how old Dicko is. He's probably about 28 now. So he would have only been like 23. You know yeah. what I mean? 20, and that's, that's even though some might say it's like your prime age for rugby league, you're still a young person. So to, so to, so to having to deal with things like that, um, naturally we're going to feel like that. But it, you know what it is? He it, it would have got over it and, and cracked on. And he's, um, but at the end of the day, 50 nil is not, not down to one person having an off day. It's down to a team not 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 performing. And I think you've got to say as well that Leeds were red hot that day. The Leeds, way Leeds were, yeah, Leeds were pretty red hot that day, and and we weren't. So that's just that's just how it went. And then the following season with the relegation. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, well that's what it's 16 we got relegated. Or what it's 15. What it's 16 or 15, 16. And then promoted in 17. 17. You know, yeah, we got, a... yeah, yeah we, got, we got relegated in 16. We got promoted in 17. And then I went off to York for 18. I think that's how it yeah. turned out. Yeah. So, so yeah, that was, bad. that was bad. Yeah. Um. Th- there was a lot of like, there was a lot of uh, bad luck involved in that season as well. Obviously, Campisi was injured a hell of a lot. Um, there was a lot of injuries anyway, weren't they? Um, and I, I seem to remember in that game against Salford, million pound game. Might just be me, but I think for them two tries at the end, the ball went ridiculously forward. I don't know mm-hmm. what the feeling was like among the team, but oh, I don't know. I think if you, if I remember back to that year. I'm sure we played Huddersfield at home and Danny Bruff got a drop goal, which me and Jamie Peacock, we were ready for a tap on 20. Yeah. I'll play it. And, and, we, and we were like, how's he give that? How's it? So, and, I, and I'm sure that game would have put us clear of the... I can't remember exactly how it panned out, to be totally honest, mate. But, but anyway, yeah. you're in, we're, in, we're in control against Salford and, and then... Um, you know, the last few minutes, it was just just bizarre. Like you talk about from a neutral point of view, that that is what people watch sport for, isn't it? From a neutral point yeah, of view, yeah. for drama like that. But being on the wrong end of it were, um, were, were, were pretty devastating, mate. To be honest, and I, I think I'm, we were about five or ten minutes into into the um, into the second half, and I, I ruptured my PCL, my posterior cruciate ligament in my knee, so yeah. I couldn't even, I couldn't carry on. And that were that were even worse. So they had the, they had to make a they had to shuffle a few players around and disrupt the team a little bit. Um, and uh, and obviously that happened. Yeah, we're definitely 2016 because that's the year me and Claire got married um, over in America. So um, so yeah, it was, it was terrible, mate. But I think the the way that the club stuck together that year and into 2017 were just unbelievable, mate. Were fantastic. Yeah. Um... Going into the championship, I, I've fond memories of that season. It was probably the best season I've experienced. Um, and like you say, just the togetherness of the club and the fans, we all came together and uh, was rewarded with the promotion. But um, how did you feel that season? Did you enjoy it? What, back in championship? Yeah. I, uh, I don't mean like playing at a lower level. Yeah, but, yeah. You know, yeah no, more. no. It, it, to be honest, mate, once I think once we got over... Once we got over the fact that we were relegated and we were playing in a, a league below, 
I think there were a bit of um, I think people I think the boys were excited. We'd got we'd we'd had a good we'd had like a, a decent pre season and everybody bonded well together. Um, and I think we were pretty excited for the, the season in front. Um, and uh, we just cracked on and, and did what we had to do. There were, again, there were some during that year. There's like some games where you just, you're like, I, I overplayed that bad. And I think a lot of it will probably to do with the the caliber of players that we had. And sometimes you just complacency, if I'm being honest, uh, yeah. a bit of, a bit of complacency, expecting to go to certain teams and, and perform a certain way and win by a certain score. But when you when you when you're the club that's being relegated and you're still full time and you're still operating like a full time club, everybody just wants a piece of you. So if you go if you go to any one game where you're uh, maybe being a little bit disrespectful in terms of the opposition and a, a bit complacent, then um, you can get caught with your pants down a bit. And I think that happened to us a few times that year where we um, we probably uh, underestimated teams and. Um, but we, we came through it. The, the top and bottom of it, we came through it, mate, and we uh, we managed to we managed to get back up. Um, so yeah, turbulent turbulent second term from me, from me at Rovers, really uh, interesting one. And like I said, I weren't I, I weren't I weren't I, like it, pretty. If I, what, one or two regrets for me really is that when I came back to wait when I came back to Rovers from Wakefield, I never found that form that I had at Wakefield. So that will that will probably a disappointing thing for me personally in terms of my career. But um, nevertheless, the club got back to Super League, and, and that's the most important thing. And then um, and then off I went, and that that was me done then. Well, just touching on that though, I, I never thought when I saw your name on the team sheet, I never thought, oh God, it's Ben Kane. You know, you was you were still a big part of the club, and. You know, very. Yeah, happy. Yeah. I just don't. I just don't. I, I just don't think I found that form that I had at Wakefield, Alex. That's. There were never, like I said, whenever I, whenever I played, and whoever I played for, there's never been a lack of effort. Um, no, no. Uh, but like, like I said, without a shadow of a doubt, I, I think uh, in 2010 and 11, I think I were coming. I think I were, I were playing all right. I were playing some good stuff, and then obviously. Just getting myself in in stupid scenarios, so I ended up leaving. But the the real turning point for me, and and like uh, to, when I took my performances to the next level, it, when I when I come through that adversity of, because I thought when I went to Featherstone, <coughs> I didn't think I'd get another crack at Super League, and and if I didn't know Richard Agar personally, because he used to live down my street, I probably wouldn't have done. Mm. I probably wouldn't have done. And Richard Agar were coaching at Wakefield at that time, and I remember him ringing me. And he came to my house. Actually, I was living, at, uh, I was staying at my parents at the time, and he came round to my house and he just said, um, "He said we're, we're happy to give you a crack, uh, but it's going to be like a, you, your contract is pretty much going to say that one strike and you, one strike and you're out." And I were like, "Well, that's fine. I'm not going to argue with that. I'm not in a position to argue with that, really." Um, I said so. So let's let's crack on. Let's uh, let's do it. And I signed. I signed a one year deal initially, um, and I think Rich Richie got the best out of me because he gave me he put me on the wing and he gave me a, like a bit of a free roll really. And I remember him always saying to me, "You've got a free roll. You can come in and get involved as much as you want from your wing, and just as long as you as long as you're on the end of the line when the ball's coming your way to finish off tries or whatever, then you can pretty much do what you want." So. Um, so that first year, 2012, I think we might have got six months into the season or halfway into the season, and they offered me a new two-year deal, Wakefield, which obviously then took me into that would have taken me into 2000 and um, into 2015. But because of the situation, obviously that's that's why it all came about. Where where okay, I ended up um, buying me to come back. So. Um, so yeah, it were, it were interesting times, mate. But like I said, with Wakefield, the um, the role that Rich Agar gave me were, were great. And if, like I said, if I didn't know him personally, I may never have got another cracking Super League. So um, it's funny how things. Like I said at the beginning, when we first started talking, I never used to believe in fate or everything happens for a reason or any of that stuff. Never really used to buy into any of that. But when I think about how things have panned out for me, then 
then maybe there is a little bit of truth to that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, so we'll we'll finish it there because I know that you're on a tight schedule. But um, just before you go, what are you up to now? So right now I'm um, I'm on furlough from Rovers. I'm head coach of the scholarship. That's my primary role. Uh, I also assist Jason Netherton with the with the academy. Uh, we've just had new contracts sent out in the post. Uh, so that's going to continue next year, all being well. Um, but aside of that, I'm uh, I'm doing some personal training stuff down at Peak Health and Fitness in um, Rye Hill, which was just through Thorn Gumball out my way. Um, I've got an online business, uh, trading currencies, which is pretty interesting, uh, learning how to make money through the internet. Um, and I'm just being super dad as well. I've got two kids on well, Molly's just turned Molly's just turned two, and little Ben is twelve weeks. So we've got um, so we've got his hands full. So I think just in wrapping up, one thing that this year, even though this year has been like nobody could have predicted what this year we're going to pan out for for, for anybody, but in terms of the family stuff for me, it's been amazing because Molly's Molly's um, she's just turned two. So throughout this year, I've seen her change so much, learning to talk, and you know, then little Ben has come along, and he's. So the the time we've had as a family has been um, it's been pretty awesome, mate. So with every negative, there's always a positive in there somewhere. Then that's probably what this year's been for me. Yeah, absolutely right. Um, just before we finish, didn't you score a hat trick versus KR for Wakey? I did. I, I did actually. Yeah, I did. I, I, I um I did it down at Bellevue. I can remember the day it were um it was wet and muddy and. Pretty boggy, but I scored three tries. In fact, in fact, that year, I think I scored five tries in total against Rovers. <laughs> never, cel- never celebrated though. Yes. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going to edit this and put it on YouTube, so anyone that's missed it can uh, see it again. I'll put the link to. I don't know if you want to give me your personal email or anything or a number for your personal training. Then I'll put that in the description as well. Yeah, and, um, I just want to thank you for doing this and I wish you all the best for the future. Cheers, Alex. Appreciate it. It's been good, mate. Thank you.